When you think about the Swedish dominance of CSGO's early years, it comes down to two teams, NIP and Fnatic. And there's no player more synonymous with Fnatic than JW. His highs and lows are the game's highs and lows. His story is CSGO's story. He's been at the top since the start of Global Offensive, and only recently he started to look fallible. After a positive start to 2020 when Fnatic won ESL Pro League, Getting ripped out of them. JW's done it all. Three frags. Two remain. One remains. It's all on to Carrigan. Fnatic, five maps, but I think they've done it. The flusher frag confirms it. And Fnatic have managed to convert full five games, a full best of five. But we have our champions, Fnatic, three time champions, no less. They then became known as the most prominent casualty of the online era. Got a check for the pillar, one spotted. Where's the other one? On the coffin, so they've got one more to find. Blame F now falling back as they line up for him. And that's going to be that. 16 to 10 for complexity. They survive in the RMR, but for Fnatic, it's home time. For players who resonate with crowd energy, the pandemic was brutal. And for a player who wants so many majors early, that hype is a crucial element. Everyone feels like lands can't come back quickly enough, but for JW, how fast lands come back may actually decide his future. The crystal ball is cloudy for now, but there's never a bad time to look back on what's been a stellar career. Both JW's story and the story of CSGO begin in earnest at the very first major in Sweden in November of 2013. Fans of the game waited outside in freezing temperatures to get into a DreamHack winter arena that would seem small by today's standards. This was NIP's era, but the Fnatic boys didn't obey the narrative. It went to a third map in the final, and JW bullied his fellow countrymen. If Freiburg would become king of banana, JW was the king of pop dog, playing aggressively on either side and going 23-8 and eight on train. The disrespectful ladder dominance helped Fnatic seal the final map 16-2, and when the dust settled, they took home $100,000. CSGO's first major MVP was none other than the Jay Wonderchild, as he wrote his and Fnatic's names in the annals of history. And until Kierby came along, he was the youngest major winner. Oh, well, JW best. That's the obvious choice of words. Uh, but, you know, he's the greatest talent Sweden has produced in a long while, I think. Um, Opera as well. Uh, you know, it's just one of a kind. JW emerged as one of the first true AWP stars, with great reaction speeds allowing him to take audacious angles, which was equally handy while AWPing or lurking. On the CT side, he combined well with Flusher early on, and they defended bomb sites together ruthlessly. The rest of the squad was Schneider and Devilwalk, with Pronax calling the shots. Even in those early meta days, the Fnatic style was loose. Pronax only had one or two options for each map, relying on player knowledge and basic communication over flashy strats and meticulous executes. The team had captured lightning in a bottle with their first major win. Now they just had to keep it there, and JW had to prove he wasn't a one-hit wonder child. To do that, they brought in a duo just as iconic as JW and Flusher. Olaf Meister joined, who insisted Krim should come on board too because they worked so well together. Halfway through 2014, Fnatic was somehow even more loose than before. But it just worked. Pronax now had a pair of great duos to work with, with a default strat of Crims and Olaf on one side and JW and Flusher on the other. Both sides intuitively knew what to do. Pronax could go grab a cocktail. Because these were formative years for CSGO, the loose style of play was seen by some as just the proper way to play the game. Later on, Astralis would disprove that notion with gusto. But back then, Flusher talked about how it was just a matter of circumstance. He said, I don't think CSGO is more based on the individual plays rather than tactics. It's just that the teams that have been winning the most recently do not feel comfortable playing a more tactical game. It's all up to the teams to decide whether they want to play loose or strict. And in Fnatic, all five of us actually want to play loose. This was JW's pro CSGO experience. Intuitive play based on hype and gut feeling. That is not supposed to happen, JW, but then again, you make it up with the no scope. You get the second one, and he goes for the third, but he doesn't get it. He has to turn to the pistol, but JW comes through, and Fnatic. 1v3 clutch the round, Navi have to be reeling. Looking back at his roots, it's easier to see how in 2021, with no crowds, the magic isn't there. There's a trade, JW now one versus two, 25 seconds of plant this bomb, gets a gun upgrade. 
but Rops is creeping and surely he gets a clean angle. Dexter, oh god, there it oh, is. Oh my goodness. While the beginning of 2014 was highly competitive, towards the end, the Fnatic era began in earnest, as the Swedes started to string together big tournament wins. JW had been ranked 8th in the world in 2013, in 2014 he rose to 5th. During this time, JW stood for just winning, and every other member of the squad was on fire too. They practiced but had a somewhat casual approach to the game. They got hyped by a big crowd. They were a land team through and through, and as the crowds got bigger, so did their performances. After having the biggest year of his career, there was a moment when JW flirted with the idea of moving to NIP, but he was convinced by Flusher to stay, and it was a good thing too. 2015 was the year of Fnatic. They took home two major trophies and won five S-tier events in total, with the run continuing into 2016. On the way, they downed legendary squads like NIP, Cloud9, Envious, Na'Vi, Luminosity, and more. And while you're on top of the world, you may as well have fun with it. I love this. I love this. The gangsters are behind me. Like, if I say one wrong word right now, it's like game over. How you guys feeling going into the semi? Like G's. Like G's. Straight up G's. I don't even know if we need to do the rest of the interview at this point. Do you guys feel good that you got a bit of a warm-up in this morning by playing that lower bracket game, that decider game? Yeah. I knew this was going to happen. Do you want to say anything at all? No. All right, bro. Keep it real gangster then. Keep it real gangster. All right. Good luck to Fnatic. The guys from Compton looking focused in this one for sure. Probably the best interview of the weekend. As the Brazilians took over in 2016, Fnatic were confronted with an unfamiliar situation. Losing. And it turns out they didn't handle it that well. At times, yeah, we hated each other. Like when we had to, um, when we played E League, um, we had to stay in Atlanta for like uh, two weeks, uh, okay. doing doing nothing really. So we we just started to um, start to annoy each other by not by us not being like at home or where we wanted to be. Like we we couldn't really do anything. Like the pieces weren't av available around the clock so uh, we had to do like or be around each other most of the time and that like start to annoy each other and uh, we, we started to get on each other each other's nerves by this time pronax had gone and in hindsight the team hadn't realized how much of a calming effect he had had while igling Without the Peacekeeper around, there was eventually a split in the team, with JW and Flusher going to Godsent and Crims following. The move was ill-fated, Godsent didn't go far, and the players eventually realized the whole thing was a mistake. They wished they'd just taken a month holiday to cool off rather than fracturing the team. For JW, it was a mistake best left in the past. I mean, not, not, not to sound annoying or anything like that, but the time together with Crims and Godsent, I, I don't really want to think about that time because it, it was not a good time for anyone. Uh, and it's nobody's fault, really. We, we just didn't click, and that's, that can happen when you decide a lineup on paper and not actually trying it out. So Crims didn't click with some players, and it, it just was a bad experience for, for them. By February of 2017, the players were back at Fnatic, but the lightning in a bottle they captured had been let out. Before long, it was clear they'd need to find new energy. In this period, Fnatic players didn't have the same confidence and dueling ability that their playstyle demanded. Without being able to make picks and transition into simple mid-round calls, they fell back on set strats, waiting for someone to make a move until there were 50 seconds left and still no solid plan. But while the team struggled, JW's stats actually improved, maintaining a 1.1 average rating in 2017. In August, the team brought in Golden to help bring Fnatic's tactics into the new era of smart utility and well-considered executes that Astralis had pioneered. The next few years would be up and down as the team went through several roster changes. They lost Flusher and got him back. They lost Golden and got him back. And they brought on Broland so they could start the long-neglected task of elevating young Swedish talent. That put JW into somewhat of a mentorship role, but it didn't stop the banter train. Who's the teacher's pet? Oh, like the bitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe Broland. He's, he's, he's the kid, you know. And, uh, I remember one time we played like Vertigo, first time ever, and he, he was kind of crying that people didn't know positions and stuff. First time we played it, so I give it to him. The highs of this period brought them briefly to the number one spot in early 2020, 
Broland was the MVP at Pro League, and even more than that, it looked like they were having fun with the game again, though JW was perhaps going for too many knife kills. And JW's thinking, like, how can I get a knife kill out of this? Because he spotted him, <laughs> he's waiting, and he's going to wait for the bomb yeah. flash. W, there it is, hopping down. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Ubo gets the kill! But as soon as the online era kicked in, there was a noticeable difference in JW's performances, as well as the team's. JW kept just above 1.0 average rating in 2020, but 2021 has been much worse with an average of 0.86. You only need to look at the player reactions as Fnatic dropped out of Flashpoint to see things are headed in a rough direction. There could even be another roster change, and we're forced to imagine what happens when the stories of CSGO and its 26-year-old wonder child diverge.